Hello and welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna take a look at Crisis Warhead. Remember I made a franchise comparison and Crisis was in it and I didn't have access to Crisis Warhead at the time so I didn't actually do it and now I do. Now I already kind of tried to launch this game and I must say it runs surprisingly on Windows 10 as well however the original Crisis did as well and it's the same engine the Crytek engine so to be honest it's not really such a big deal. What is a big deal is that this game is very little known, I would say, because no one really speaks about it. And the reason for that is it's kind of crisis, but not really. So the story goes that we are actually playing as one of the teammates, Psycho, and it takes place exactly after we blow up the shipyard. And it just is weird. I mean... I did the first mission uh, real quick just to make sure that uh, the game runs and I must say DirectX 10 version runs considerably worse than the DirectX 9 version. I don't know why, but oh well. Anyway, uh, what are you going to do? We're going to do it on uh, Full HD because I, I actually recorded the video on 4K and the scaling issues were just insanely bad, so we're just going to be like this. Uh, everything will be maxed out as much as I can, well, max out. Apparently this is the maxed out version, so let's apply this. Sorry about that. And we are on enthusiast level, which is, well, the maximum we can get. It's... I don't know, th those are the days when gaming was kind of taking off, you know, the good old times, right? So, 2007 till, I would say, 2012, give or take, maybe 15 if you stretch it far enough with a glass of whiskey. I don't know, I, I really don't feel like playing this game because I played it, I think, twice and it just didn't really click. It's completely different playstyle, it's completely different character and you don't see the character arc, you, you kind of just get thrown in as a psycho and psycho character really shows in crisis 3 in warhead it's just mech anyway i'm gonna let you guys you know kind of decide this for yourself let's start a new game i'm gonna start on recruit uh as you saw i finished the original crisis on delta so i think i deserve to do easy now so without further ado let's take a look how it runs and We'll talk about the frames and the GPUs and everything in just a second. Let's roll.
located. Precursors two and four isolated. Damn it. The proxy's redlining on three trigger detection algorithms. Initiating AI bypass procedure. We've still got live precursors. I've got no choice. I think we've got a code blue. Raptor team! Yeah, what's left of it? We need to get you out of the open. Rally point is any cover we can find in that ridge. We got Incoming! enemy inbound from all other directions. This is Bravo 1 2. We've got Raptor. All whiskey tango elements KIA. Moving to checkpoint 2 0. Where's our air support? We've got incoming IDF. Okay. Mortar! the ridge through there. We'll buy you as much time as we can. See you at the victory parade, Sergeant. Back where we landed. You know the outcome. I saw what happened to that boat, but I thought it was just an anomaly. I'm going to pass this intel along to the DIA, but for now, continue with your objective. Link up with Sierra team and be their ACM for the airstrike.
And this is basically how Warhead kind of looks like. And to be honest, it, it's basically the same as the original Crisis. However, there are some uh, new additions. So first of all, you have you can do a little bit of SMGs. Command. Be advised, Raptor will be your ACM on this mission. Raptor? I don't suppose I have a choice in this, do I? Fucking hell, I knew it. Sean O'Neill. Sierra lead. Deploy 7. Over. Roger that. So one of the reasons why I didn't really want to cover this game is it just doesn't feel like Crisis. It technically is the next part, but uh, it, as people actually outlined, it should be a DLC rather than a full-fledged game. But, you know, they, they had to keep the money coming in, so it's one of those things. Not really much changed in terms of graphical fidelity. No real upgrades, as you can see, on Full HD in 2021 we're pulling 1.5 gigs of video memory, which would be pretty much impossible in 2008 when this game came out, which is only a year after the original Crisis launched. And, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't feel like Crisis, you know what I mean? And Drop on lead, over. Roger, Command. The KPA will soon be isolated. Now we need to neutralize their base of operations at the beach resort. Head there and be ready. Bombs away. Affirmative. Woohoo! Hot damn! Sierra lead. New orders from JSOC. Reallocating Sierra 2 for ground support mode. Roger, Command. Negative, Command. Send Sierra 3. Sierra 3 has already been allocated. What she means is your gin-soaked ass is surplus to requirements. But you wanted action, Sierra 2. Well, now you've got it. Yeah, okay. Ground support. I copy. Sierra 2 Command. Priority is target acquisition and neutralization. Secondary is recon. Keep your comm cam rolling. I've detected the Korean mill net. Access their tactical network and let's see what they've got cooking. With a bit of luck, we might be able to pick up more than just intel. So, dual wielding SMGs is one of the things this game kind of really does very well. Uh, just to have fun and stuff. The problem is, it kind of tries to be Halo a bit, but it fails. And this is why this game is not really being recognized. Obviously, apparently, well, apparently as in terms of obviously, the multiplayer portion for Warhead was better than the Crisis one, at least so the legends say. And since I've never played multiplayer, I don't really have an opinion on that, and I will trust the majority of people who have played it. It just feels a bit weird. The explosions do look a bit different, but it, it's kind of hard to say if it's for better or worse. Probably for better. Anyway, now we need to go and do multiple things. If we go that way... We're gonna hit a checkpoint, which will be blown up. If you go that one, there, it's a secondary objective. Which I guess we could, we're gonna just quickly go here and do the little... Little bit of sneaky sneaky. Now, when you play as Psycho, you are basically discouraged to go stealth. Which is a bit weird. At the same time, this game has never been really like a milsim, you know, stealth and stuff. So, one of those things, I guess. As you can see, we have a bit different weaponry available, like mines, which uh, I don't believe we actually had in original Crisis. But overall, it's kind of like the same, but different. And this is the confusing part. Those who knows, knows how Crisis works, right? Or how it plays. Bye. They will play this game and be very surprised how it's not a crisis game. Okay, I've got a lot of traffic in these reports, but the key points are... 1. A political officer from Pyongyang called Colonel Lee is running this operation. 
two, he recently requested a special delivery from Yongbyon Kun. That's their main nuclear research site. Exactly. I need to take this higher, but consider this your top intel target until we have clearance on how to engage it. Now this is interesting. We've received reports from Team Idaho of a Korean propaganda station flooding their channels. The Korean Milnet pinpoints the source here, close to your position. Add it to your secondary targets. Copy, Command. United States Secretary of Defense, James Blackburn. Upon the People's Republic of Korea... I don't know. I guess we're just gonna go with the flow here real quick and uh, do the propaganda bit. It's gonna be pretty pretty easy since you can have a vehicle, but I don't know. Every The longer I play this, and by no means I'm playing this at any serious capacity, the more I understand why I'm not playing this game over and over again, because it just feels wrong. It feels like not being Crisis. As I said, it's just... Yeah, it looks the same, it, it, but it doesn't feel like Crisis. You don't have this character engagement as you have with Nomad. We have things to do and that's about it. And that's very sad. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm the crazy one here, you know? I don't know, this, this feels forced. If With Nomad, I wanted to explore, I wanted to use the suit. In With Warhead, I just want to get this over with. And this is very bad feeling when you are supposedly paying money for the game. You know what I mean? Anyway. Airwaves are clear again. Team Idaho are sure to relay their thanks. Of course, in terms of uh, graf uh, graphics and physics, everything is exactly the same. And we have 15 grenades, which basically shows how... <laughs> how destruction-bent Psycho character actually is, apart from Nomad. And this house does not want to show up the Crytek engine. Come on! Eh, good enough, I guess. And obviously, it's not a big surprise that this game was never destined to be remastered, because it just... I mean, how do you say that you just don't want to play the game, but you played it, so you kind of have a memory of it, but it's nothing special, and it's supposed to be special? I mean, Crisis 2 at least introduced you as a prophet, playing as a prophet and continue the well the lore in crisis 3 where you basically see psycho without the suit and all the stuff first crisis introduced the aliens the, the the koreans the whole shenanigans and the big boss fight at the end this game is a filler that no one actually asked and it feels like it it literally feels like you know unwanted child but you know you have to go and play with the neighbor's kid and the neighbor's kid is this you you can do the same thing but story story wise there's nothing really here which is terrible I can see how this could be good in multiplayer, like in terms of chopping down trees with machine gun and stuff like that. Kind of gives you a battlefield vibe, but apart from that, nothing really special. And this is what keep clearing that the most. Block, psycho. I'm gonna lay down some ordnance. Roger that. Just don't make me another friendly fire statistic. 
Now that's a hit. Which we didn't see. I don't know, honestly. It just is weird. Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, take some dual building going on here. I think that's the only good part about this game is actually when you you can dual build. But this again feels so much out of place with this game than I would expect it to be. But the explosions kind of look cool when they happen. I would say they definitely improved on that. But yeah, I, I don't really think that this game will be remembered at any time. Psycho, can you track that helicopter? Maybe that's your special delivery. That's a shielded cask for spent nuclear fuel. So, not a weapon then? I can't be sure. The KPA have co-opted those casks for carrying nuclear warheads before. It's not a risk we can afford to take. Okay, two soft tops incoming. Don't fuck this up. I'm detecting a direct link to nearby reinforcements. Following behind, I've got another soft top diverting onto the beach, and an APC pulling up the rear. I'm also tracking two troop carriers and a KPA chalk. But what the hell? Just tear up the whole damn resort. KPA trucks are pulling up onto the beach. O'Neill, listen up. I wasn't planning on going solo. I need munitions. What you got? Okay, wait one while I access their mill net. Got it. There's a huge stash of explosives at the beach bar. And this is what I'm talking about, like, it doesn't feel like you want to go stealth, you want to just blow stuff up, you're even encouraged to do that. Ah, the chopper who shot at me is not even facing me, and he's out of my minimap. Yeah, I don't know why, but I kind of feel like this game was a bit rushed, which oh. I, I understand. I mean, all the memes from Can It Run Crisis and stuff, and I must say... This game is not exactly very well optimized as well. As you can see, even with 1080 Ti, in 2021, we There's are literally just... In the car park. O'Neill, shut the fuck up. Even now, look at this. We're, we're basically below 100 frames. And there's nothing around us. Of course, we have pegged out some settings that we technically shouldn't even touch because it doesn't really make much sense. But we've done it anyway. So, maybe that's the reason? Don't know, but it also doesn't really matter. Uh, when it comes to approach, obviously, people will say, Oh, but you can do this and that. Yeah, you can, but do you need to? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say you need to play this game in particular fashion. Okay, you fucked up. They called in reinforcements. I'm gunning for the restaurant. Keep clear.
So, the objective is to clear out the reinforcements, which are literally coming for me right now. The APC on the road is still active. And this, this is the whole gameplay, literally. If you remember Crisis, you will remember how you were excited to approach different checkpoints. You were excited about how, you know, the game plays, the, the ways you can sneak in, be stealthy. In here, none of this matters. It's just so out of place. I don't know, it's probably just me remembering good old days. That are clearly gone, but at the same time, we can't. We should have expectations, right? I don't know, the more I play, the more I understand why I did not particularly like this game. Or I don't actually want to really play too much. That APC is more of an annoyance than a threat. The chopper has fucked off somewhere. I don't know, you know what, let, let, let's just wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. I don't know, this is just... There's, there's no stress. I do believe even on Delta difficulty, this would be... I, I, I don't feel like this is Crisis. I'm, I honestly don't. It, I, it looks like Crisis. It plays like Crisis. It has the same features as Crisis. But it is just simply not Crisis. Which I find very hard to believe, considering how much effort has gone into this game. However, it only proves the point that money grabs rarely turn out good. And I don't know. If you, if you look at... The, Crisis 2, for instance, right? It was specifically made for PC. They had to adapt it for consoles as well. However, they were frame locked at 60 frames for reasons unknown. This game is not. It's so weird. Okay, let's let, let's wrap this up. You know, it's just. Great job, Psycho. It's Barry 150, 25 at Angels 4, 50 right. Spiked! Deploying CM! Breaking right! Come on, come on! Jinking left! Try to shake this! Shit! I'm hit! Left engine! 
is gone! Sierra 2 is down. I say again, Sierra 2 is down. And I personally think this is enough for today. Um, I just don't feel it, you know? Like, just don't. I, I honestly don't understand why this game just is a bit repulsive, you know? I just, I just don't want to play it. I would replay First Crisis anytime. I would replay Crisis 2 anytime. And even though... You know, it's questionable in terms of quality of the game or the storyline, and you can always nitpick and, you know, you can basically look at Crisis 3 and go, what the hell happened here? But this, as I said, it's it feels like a, a backstory filler that nobody asked for, and it acts like it as well. Of course, there are some cool stuff later in the game. Uh, not going to spoil it for anyone, but I don't know, I guess you just have to power through it. Anyway, if you got any questions or any challenges or you want to see more of the actual gameplay where I take it seriously, please do let me know and I'll see what I can do for you. But as for now, I really hope you're going to have a wonderful day and, you know, as always, guys, stay classy.